AI, artificial intelligence, it seems to be the thing that everyone is talking about at the moment. Plenty of brands are releasing stuff and Apple's sort of taken a bit of time to enter this space. And as we all know, Apple always does things in its own different way. So with Apple intelligence, how has Apple thought about artificial intelligence differently? Yeah, so I think it is a incredible technology that is, you know, something that we've used for many, many years actually. So if you look at AI and machine learning, we've built it into OS's and cap features and capabilities for many years. But now with Apple Intelligence, I think we're entering a new, a new era. And one of the key things for us about Apple Intelligence and the approach that we're taking is that we, we want to focus on making it personal intelligence and making it a personal intelligence system, not an artificial one, but one that's personal and is powerful, capable, helpful for you, but also has an incredible privacy promise associated with it. So as we've thought about it, as we've created the system and as we've built it, which as you know is built on foundation and diffusion models that we have created and trained, we have worked to make sure that it is an integrated experience that you can use across the system, across products, and just it's with you wherever you're going. So you don't actually have to think about it as something that's separate. It's actually built into all of the experiences that you have and throughout that whole experience, we never compromise on your privacy. Mm. There's a quote, we shape our tools and thereafter our tools shape us. And I'm, I'm always interested to see how new technology changes the way we do things. Just from your initial impressions, whether that's yourself or seeing other people use it, are there some practical things that really excite you about Apple Intelligence? Yeah, well, I think, first of all, the most exciting thing is that we actually are bringing Apple Intelligence here to Australia this week. And I think we're all going to learn and see how people take advantage of the incredible capabilities of Apple intelligence. Because it's one of those things where you think maybe you're going to do something or use uh, something, you know, a particular feature. But then as you get into it, you realize there are these places where in Apple intelligence just provides such an incredible, helpful capability. Uh, for me, I'm, I spend a lot of time writing. Um, and writing tools has become just a natural part of my flow. I don't even think about it as, oh, I need to go do that anymore. It's just, it's right there. It's wherever you have that blinking cursor, you've got access to, to writing tools. And so for me, it's been incredibly helpful because I can go in and I can jot down a, and quickly you know, put together a note and then use writing tools to help refine and ultimately to proofread and kind of make that you know, uh, make that, that quick idea into something that I can then share with others. One of the great things about it is that I learn throughout the process, right? When I, when I go and use proofread within writing tools, you step by step go through and see the changes that are being suggested. And so you learn as you go. And so I think that's one of the ways, as you put it, where it's going to help reshape and kind of improve just my, you know, my own personal natural writing style. Um, I also think that there are other places where it's going to unlock creative possibilities for people who may be, you know, uh, not comfortable drawing with Apple Pencil on an iPad. But now they can go sketch just something rough and then turn it into something that's, that's much more refined and much more powerful. So um, ultimately, I think it's going to depend on, you know, individual by individual where they find the most resonance and, and helpfulness. But I think for us, the great thing and the thing that's, I think, unique is that we've just built it across the entire system, yeah. right? It's not like you have to go think about, oh, I have to go use Apple Intelligence. Nope, it's there. It, it's, mm. it's, it's available to you. I love that. There's the efficiency, the possibility, and then the ease of use. I think as someone who reviews tech, often in the student context, we're almost spoilt with the hardware we have available to us with what Apple's achieved with Apple Silicon. Um, there's literally nothing more we can ask for. And as a result, firstly, that's really commendable from Apple's point of view, but it leads to more interesting questions. Mm. I'm in the context of education, and while AI is developed often with optimistic views, there are always unintended effects. Mm -hmm. And there's this tension that's going on in higher education at the moment between AI, in one sense, being used as a thing that students outsource their judgment to, a thing that's going to think for them. But then there's this more optimistic view um, of a tool that allows you to engage critically in a way that we haven't been, haven't been able to engage with before. Yeah. And so what's, what's your view on 
how you want students and people who are learning to be engaging with this kind of technology? Yeah, I think the, the thing that we have really thought about and focused on and, and our approach is one of helping you refine your creative process to extend your creative process to make it more richer as you go through it and it but not to replace the idea generation piece right we believe that that is so inherently key to to who we are and to learning and to creativity is you need that first step to come from you and our approach is then to help extend that to take it you know beyond what you've you know been able to do before um, and and enhance that experience um, but not replace that first kind of generation moment and throughout that process as we just talked about making sure that uh, we are being you know transparent about the things that are happening so you kind of learn and understand and you can also fine-tune um, you know for example if you're creating a gen moji simple I idea um, we put all of the terms that are up there so you can start to play with understanding how they relate to the image and you remain in control of how you're, um, of how you're taking ad advantage of it. And so one of the key things I think in the context of, of education is, is making sure that the spark of the idea, the creative, that first moment, that creative thought still comes from, from you. Um, and it's not outsourced to some, some system, but then we can help uh, kind of take that take that further. I think the other thing you mentioned was efficiency, which is, you know, oftentimes one of the most valuable creative resources is time. Um, and one of the great things about, you know, for example, email summarization or some of these other tools is it can take away some of the mundane tasks of the digital world to free up time for you to be able to go then do that core creative work. Um, and you know, another, it's another place that's been transformative for me is mail summarization. Whereas if I have to go click through each email, that'll take you know, many, many minutes, whereas now I can scan it, essentially take care of my inbox and then move over to things that are more, more creative, more value adding, more, more interesting. So I think it's this combination of you know, being able to give you tools to kind of take your creativity further while also freeing up time for you to be able to spend in that creative endeavor. I really like that. The efficiency in the mundane tasks allows us to be more human in the things that really matter. Um, my final question is, I mean, there's a quote from Steve Jobs and it's, the computer, computer's like a bicycle for the mind, that it inherently amplifies the way we think. And I look at software like Word, Excel, and the things that they've allowed us to do. And often when a new medium comes along, we tend to do the things we did before, mm -hmm. perhaps a bit quicker, a bit faster. Um, and I can see that just in the initial way people are adopting AI. Can you tell me what possibility do you see? What are the sorts of things you think we could be doing with such power and technology like this that people just don't see yet, but once they pick up on, could change the way they work? Yeah, it's, it, it's interesting. And, and like I said, you know, at the beginning, we are in the very early innings of what's, uh, you know, of, of Apple intelligence and kind of being able to, to, to roll it out here is, I think, incredibly important. And for us observing how our customers, um, our educators, our creators take advantage of it is always something that we can then learn from and understand and, and help influence kind of how we think about the, the future. But I think one of the things that, that I hope for um, is that Apple intelligence um, and kind of the way in which we you know, uh, are able to put some creative tools in the hands of people, that it'll start to unlock some more curiosity in the, and for people to just start to explore again. Um, you know, for example, one of the things that is, is, is simple but it's incredibly powerful is Siri now um, has been trained on all of the knowledge set about, of our, pro about our products. Um, and so you can now use Siri to answer questions like, you know, how do I change my Wi-Fi network? How do I do this? How do I do that? And it, it, it's simple but it's going to extend the way in which people can take advantage of 
the capabilities that they have latent in the products that are in front of them. Um, and as you point out, there are so many things that we've done over the years with you know, our operating systems, with, our, with Apple Silicon, et cetera. Um, that's just a powerful foundation that people can kind of springboard off of. Um, so um, it's an exciting time, um, and it's an exciting time to see what will happen. And I think that, you know, to your, your question, uh, the, the creative endeavors and, and kind of the horizon is, is going to be fascinating. I agree. And I think the message that I'm trying to give to students in the context is there's one way to look at AI as a shortcut. And I think the other way is there was a time where if you had all the answers, that gave you an advantage. That if you could memorize information and regurgitate it, yeah. you did really well. And what I think is really cool to see now is you can have all the answers, but what's more valuable is having the questions. That the very human thing about being curious um, is what learning is going to come down to because yeah. that's what we need young people, students, graduates, people in the world to have. Yeah, and if we can get people to engage their curiosity through some of these tools and run what-if experiments, uh, that's just going to build that muscle that, to your point, is going to kind of elevate people to do the things that are are truly kind of powerful, creative, net new, um, and uh, and be able to you know hopefully transform the world. Thank you. Both. Awesome. Appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Your time. Thank you. Likewise.